Okay. Let's make sure this thing is working. Make sure I get those notifications that tells me that I am live. Boom, that's the one. That's what we're looking for. Bing, bang, boom. There it is. We are live, folks. We are live. Uh, so I'm going to put this little banner up that tells you, if you see it, please share it. Uh, I'm going to add the little comments so some folks can see it bear with me if you're if you're joining the live stream and you're and you're not familiar with what I do in the first couple minutes of these live streams is I got to share it out uh, two groups to my profile to some events so that uh, people kind of know that this thing is happening um, I have noticed that sometimes even people that follow my page don't particularly get the notifications that uh, I am uh, going live. So with that said, be patient uh, if you can. There's a little scrolling banner uh, on the on the bottom of the screen that says share if you if you are able to and if you share it out, it will make this uh, weird little awkward process a little little less weird and awkward essentially. Uh, so give me a few minutes to share this out into a few groups here and there. And, uh, and we will get into uh, today's fun, fun, fun video chat situation. So give me just a few minutes. Uh, if you want to, you can leave a comment uh, about what's going on with you, how you're doing on your end, what's going on, on in, 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 in your neck of the woods. Um, and uh, and then we'll and then we'll kick this song bitch off. Uh, how's that sound? So give me just a few minutes. We're gonna be sharing. Like I said, I'll reiterate this uh, for for people that are joining in. I'm gonna be sharing in some groups. If you want to, you can hit that share button and share it in some groups yourself. Uh, that is always super 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 helpful. Um, I can't do too many shares into groups because, uh, because then Facebook questions whether I'm a real boy or not. And, uh, I don't, I don't kind of need that in my life. If, if, uh, if I'm being honest, I, I don't, uh, I don't need Facebook questioning whether I'm, I'm a real boy or not because I am a real boy. And I know that about myself. I don't need Facebook telling me that, you know, I don't need Facebook questioning my goddamn reality I'll, I'll i'll tell you that much friends <laughs> so yeah so we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of these stories well we're only gonna talk about one story today because um it is it is also show day for me so i can't uh i can't stay too long but we will do the best that we can um so, like I said, if you're joining and you're wondering what this awkward situation that we are in is, that's that's because I'm sharing and inviting people uh, to make sure that they can see this video, uh, because sometimes Facebook doesn't do that. So, and uh, and I know this is this one's kind of random. Um, I did talk about that uh, a couple weeks ago. Is that I'll randomly sometimes do videos if if I feel like it's a story that I need to cover, and this story is something that has popped up in. Um, in various different uh, different feeds and such. So I feel like it's something that I do want to address and do want to talk about. So I hope that you'll hang in there. I hope that you'll wait just a few minutes. I hope you'll hit that share button, uh, tell some people about it, and uh, and then we can, we can dive into uh, this discussion. And like I said, I will uh, encourage you to uh, leave some comments, um, you know, about how you're doing. What's your, what's, what's your day looking like? You know, how's, how's your Friday? How's your Friday treating you? Is it good? Is it great? I don't know. Uh, I can let you know how my Friday is going and what's going on with me in just a few minutes. Uh, I have, I'm going to invite some folks to check out this video. Uh, people that, uh, normally watch this, this, this thing. 
and uh, make sure that they are they are getting the updates, you guys. They're getting the updates because sometimes that's, like I said, Facebook doesn't really. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I'm like not one of Facebook's favorite uh, people. Like I'm just, it's just not a thing that like Facebook doesn't particularly care for me because I like to talk about subversive topics. <laughs> and they're like, no, we don't, we don't want you to talk about, talk about things that we say you should talk about. You don't, you don't get to just talk about whatever you want. This is, who do you think you are, fella? Very aggressive, this Facebook. Very aggressive. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. All right. more people that I know tune into the these these bad boys I want to make sure that they are invited to participate in the conversation so hang with me stay stay with me if you're if you're tuning in We are almost ready to dive into our story for the day. All right, uh, I think I've invited uh, quite a few people here. Uh, the last thing I need to do is put this into the event because I tend to forget to do that sometimes. So I'm gonna put that into the event. Copy that link there. We're doing the event thing. I know a lot of people are like, well, why don't you just have like a guy that, that shares this stuff out whenever you go live and stuff. And I would love that. I would very much do that, but I can't uh, afford to pay them and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it becomes difficult to, uh, to be able to do that. Okay. I think we are ready to go. Um, one of the things you can do as we, as we uh, always do when we get into these is, uh, you know, you can leave a comment. And what I'll do is if it's turning into a bit of a longer piece, I will break it at a, at a certain point and then I will co come and look at the comments and, and put them up on the screen uh, just like this. Oh boy, uh, you know, well, look at this handsome fella leaving a comment. Uh, and then we read the comment and we talk about the comment and then we'll, we'll, you know, move, uh, move to the next comment or, or what have you. So, uh, a couple, couple little things, uh, I guess we'll go in order, uh, a couple little announcements. I guess this would be the check-in portion of the show. If you've, if you've never watched a live stream of mine, I, I usually do a little check-in, um, at the top of each show, uh, to kind of just talk about what's going on uh, with me. And I always encourage people to do the same, whether it's a, a physical health thing, a mental health thing, a, a accomplishment, a challenge that you're facing, so on and so forth. So a um, couple little things on my end is tonight is, uh, is, is another Citizen Revolution virtual live stand-up comedy show. Uh, uh, as, as the little comment suggests, I'm giving 50% of ticket sales to grassroots organizations, venues, so on and so forth. Um, so uh, tonight, uh, the uh, I'm donating 50% of the ticket sales to a movement for a people's party, which means that I'm going to be uh, talking about elections, new parties, third parties, history of uh, third party, so on and so forth. So uh, that is the link. The link is also in the description of this video. Um, grab your tickets. Uh, they're only five bucks, five bucks minimum. Um, if you're a sustaining member, you get a free ticket. If you, uh, are in a financial rut and you still want to come check out the show, uh, you still want to support the cause in some way and, uh, let me know, send me a message, uh, send me an email. I'll give you a code for a free ticket and, uh, and, and you can, you can join us in the virtual showroom. Um, uh, always you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation. If you, if you're saying, Hey, I can't come to the show tonight. Uh, I would like to come to a later one, but, uh, you know, I want to donate to the cause. That's a way to donate to the cause links are in the description to that as well. Uh, sustaining members, you get a lot of perks. 
uh, and uh, this is my this is my album that's available for a dollar on Bandcamp. Um, it's also available on wherever the hell you get uh, uh, your your music stuff from. So that's all the stuff that I've got going on is those three things. And I've been pretty much the last couple of weeks just kind of been focused on these shows and trying to keep up with all of the news of the protests and um, you know trying to find uh, different. Um, grassroots organizations and venues for each of these shows that I can partner with and to make sure that the donations are going to the right place. So that's that's kind of where I'm at. It can get a little stressful. Last week was last week was tight. I was I was kind of under the wire, which is why last weekend I didn't do any live streams because I was very, very stressed out. Um, I really wanted to get the show done. I really wanted to like, you know, uh, G g make it good and uh, and make sure that people bought tickets because I was donating all of the uh, um, ticket sales to Black Missions Collective and I wanted to make sure that we raised a decent amount of money. And it's the same thing. Like this week has also kind of been uh, the same thing. So if you uh, if if uh, you know you you get those tickets, they're they're going to a grassroots organization. That's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so uh, yeah, that's. So I, I, I always tend to get nervous and people always come through. Sometimes people come through at the last minute and, but you know, that it's, it's an anxiety that I don't think I can ever shake. You know, I think that's just a performer anxiety of like, whenever you put something up, you're like, I hope people watch this and I hope people care about it. And I hope people do things with it. Uh, that, that just never goes away. Um, so uh, yeah. Sorry for all these uh, little delays there, but uh, I think let's jump, jump into the story that I want to talk about here today, uh, which is that the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette is censoring stories about protests and police brutality. Um, got wind of this story a couple days ago. I think on Monday or Tuesday is when I got wind of this story. Um, and uh, it's pretty crazy about what happened. I contacted the reporter to to, to try to get an interview with her to talk about, you know, like what the fuck is going on and uh, how she's handling it and everything like that. Um, she's very busy and she's very nice. Uh, so hopefully later in, in the month or later next month, you'll, you, she'll, there'll be an episode of Taboo Table talk about this. Uh, what I wanted to do today is there's two articles that I want to read. One's from the Pittsburgh City Paper and one is a response from the Post-Gazette itself uh, about what's going on. So here is the city paper article, and we'll, we'll look through this. Uh, you know, so, so you can see up at the top, there's a big image, 404 page not found. Uh, that's a 404 uh, effort. So uh, the article reads, the late, late in the evening of June 5th, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, uh, two stories from their website that were shared earlier in the day on the paper social media platform. Uh, or sorry, Pittsburgh Post Gazette removed two stories. Uh, one story was written by PG reporter Lauren Lee and summarized the march that snaked through Pittsburgh East End in order of George Floyd, a black man killed in many, by the Minneapolis police. The other was a story uh, wrapping up statements from Pittsburgh city councilors for a discussion about police brutality and reforms. This story was written by PG reporter Ashley Murray, who tweeted that she reported the issue to the newsroom at 8.40 p.m. and still hasn't heard back as of 11.30 p.m. Uh, as of the late night of June 5th, the stories were still posted on the paper's social media platform, but the links were dead. So here's a tweet um that ashley uh put up here here is so you can see that this is the cover image city council members join social media activism uh visit marches da, 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 da. uh so sometime in the morning of june 6 new links were created with the original headline but they contain no bylines pittsburgh city paper editor lisa, lisa cunningham confirmed with murray that the story she originally wrote was rewritten and the lead photo was changed. So check this out. Uh, you have two different, let me, let me see if I can pull up the, tw the tweet and switch off to this. So you can, you can see 
um, that, uh, you know, it was, it was changed. They changed it. So I'm going to pull up the tweet here. Give me just one second. So there, so there's the tweet. Look at that. Two different, two different. You have this one. This is the original one. And then this is what it got changed to. Same headline, no byline, uh, different, different cover images, right? And, and the cover images too, from the original shows this big, large protest. And then this shows copaganda. Like that's kind of, that's really just what that is. It's just copaganda. Um, you know, that's, that's really, really, I know that's sort of a, I don't know, aggressive term maybe, but, but it is, you know, these cops can take a knee and they can stay, you know, uh, put their fists up and all this other shit. But, um, what does that do, you know, where the same place, and we saw this with the Buffalo, um, the, the elderly protester in Buffalo that got shoved and had his head cracked open, was bleeding from the ears. And then the cops got in the way of like people trying to help him. 24 hours earlier from that, at that same spot, the cops were all taking a knee and putting their fists up, just like we saw in that tweet, uh, just like we saw in those, on those cover photos. So that's copaganda. That's what that is. That's copaganda. Um, it's, it's meant to say, well, look, there are these really nice cops. And we talked about this notion of good cops, right? And we'd like to believe that there were notions of good cops. In fact, I even wrote a bit about it. I wrote a specific bit talking about, hey, why don't we hear stories about good cops doing good things? You know, and the bit, bit was a lot about media manipulation surrounding police brutality. Um, and, uh, and here's the reason why we don't. You know, this, I wrote this bit in 2014, 2014, 2015, some, some, somewhere around there. Um, a lot of beliefs have changed. That's the, that's the core foundational point of that belief. And here's where it's gotten to. There, there's no good cops because they all get removed from the system. That's what happens. So when you see pictures like, like that, where they're kneeling and they've got their fists up and, you know, they're, they're hugging protesters and all this other shit, that's all copaganda. And, you know, if they were truly good cops, they would be the ones getting in the way of all of these police officers firing rubber bullets and tear gas at innocent protesters, at peaceful protesters. So if they were truly good cops, they would break off those lines and use their riot shields to protect protesters and not kneel and then the day, the day after shove an elderly man to crack his head on the concrete. So it's copaganda. So the Post Gazette removed an image of, you know, this huge protest to show like exactly how big the movement is to look at these nice cops doing this nice thing. So, you know, it can't be, it can't be as bad as you think it is. And the and and you see Pittsburgh Post and Post because it's not even the conservative paper in town. Uh, I I get I I guess they would be like left of center. I guess that's that's sort of the um, distinction that they would they would have is left of center. So let's go back to the article now uh, to talk uh, to continue this. So you see that same thing here. Um, we saw Ashley Murray's thing change as well. So it goes on to say, Lee also confirms that the story has replaced her coverage and that her byline was removed and the lead photograph was changed. Instead of a shot showing protest signs, uh, it shows police kneeling with marchers at a different march than Lee covered. So it wasn't even the, it wasn't even what Lauren Lee covered. So Lauren Lee is the second, um, second journalist who this happened to. So Ashley Murray was the first one. Lauren Lee was the second one, right? Ashley Murray's had this, the, it showed the uh, police, it showed the, you know, the militarization of the police to, a, you know, this protester, I guess. Um, and, and Lauren Lee, it went to the copaganda. So the article goes on to say, these apparently removed and replaced stories come uh, 
on the heels of a Twitter protest undertaken by members of the Newspaper Guild of Pittsburgh, uh, the union that represents the 140 staffers at the PG. Today, Guild members and others reposted PG staffers Alexis Johnson's tweet word for word with the hashtag, I stand with Alexis. So if you're unfamiliar with what that is, um, let's see if this is this link here is the tweet. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the tweet. Alexis Johnson is a, uh, is a, is a, a black reporter in, in Pittsburgh, and she has been barred from covering protests uh, because of a tweet she put out. And what is the tweet she put out? Boy, you guys are going to be very upset about, the, uh, about that when you see it. Is This is the tweet that she put out, and it's not even like this crazy... Uh, so she she writes this, uh, if you can't see, horrifying scenes and aftermaths from selfish looters who don't care about the city. Oh, wait, these are pictures from a Kenny Chesney concert tailgate. Whoops. And you see, like, you see how crazy these images are, right? Uh, like, there's just people in, in, in trucks, there's garbage all over the place, shit's pop, popping off all over, the like, these garbage cans are overflowing. This is a yearly thing in Pittsburgh that used to happen. Like, the first time I remember seeing it, I was just like, what the fuck? Like, how does, and, but Kenny Chesney doesn't give a shit about any of this. Like, he doesn't say, tell people to, like, clean up after themselves. They all just get drunk and listen to fucking propaganda music. So, you know, they, they don't really care. So Alex Johnson tweets this out. And she is uh, she is um, not allowed to report about protests in for the for the Post Gazette anymore. So everybody retweeted this. I retweeted it as well, and uh, all the 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 newspaper unions and stuff retweeted it as well. And they said that I stand with Alexis. Hashtag I stand with Alexis, right? And that was that was like the big thing that was going on. So. Um, that's what they're talking about here. And that happened on May 31st about, you know, oh, look at these looters and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, yeah, that's right. Is you don't say anything whenever fucking white people do it. Like, you know, when they go to a Kenny Chesney concert and they destroy the city, like, you don't fucking say shit about it. Um, so the article goes on to say PG managing editor Karen Kane didn't respond to comment, but instead directed CP to Guild Letters. In an associate press story about the union's Twitter post, Kane wrote in an email that PG's editor cannot comment on personal matters. According to the Twitter account of the of Pittsburgh bookstore City Books, uh, Kane said, "I'm aware of the broken links, but nothing seems nothing has been removed. I can't comment about personal matters for obvious reasons. But Alexis remains a valued part of our great staff. I'm sorry for your alarm, and I appreciate your passion." So you know, this kind of watered down response is essentially what this was. Uh, she's basically saying like, oh, I can't, this is a personal matter. It's a personal matter within the paper and we can't comment on those personal matters. Just horse shit uh, is really what it is, right? Uh, however, stories were removed for several hours uh, last night when this article was written and reporters say their words have been replaced according to a PG staffer who wished to remain anonymous. Uh, the replaced version of Murray's story was uploaded by a member of non-unionized management at 747 a.m. on June 6th. This staffer shared a screenshot of PG's publishing software to confirm this. So the union is going to bat for these stories to be released the way that they were intended to be released. Um, now I've heard um, Tim Pool is somebody that I've I've followed for a while, and some people don't like Tim Pool. Some people do like Tim Pool. I think he's fine. I don't think he's like um, the best or anything, but I think he's fine. There there are certain things that he does that are cool. Um, some some of the things that I you know disagree with his viewpoints on, and that's okay. Um, but you know, Tim talked about working for uh, for Fusion and stuff, and there was a video that he did where he was basically like he would turn in. Um, basically word for word transcripts of what his interviews were with specific people and the editor would change them. And he was like, you changed my thing. And he's like, yeah, because you, your, your interview made it seem like it was leaning in a particular direction. And he was like, yeah, but, but I didn't, I'm just literally typing up what this guy said. 
And if the, what this guy said sounds like it's more left leaning or right leaning or whatever, like that's just that's just what it is. That's the report, you know. That's what ju journalists are supposed to do. So they would they would tweak it in a way to to either make it sound like um, it matched what they needed it to match, like the 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 bias that it needed to match. Um, or something different, right? Like they were manipulating it in a, in a particular way. And it's just like, this is so weird. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of what's happening here. And they're using non-union members, you know, that, uh, that, that don't have, you know, like if they didn't do it, they would probably were like, well, you can either do this or you can get fired. You know, like they're allowed to do that sort of stuff. So I don't know if that's what I'm making a conjecture, obviously, in this situation. I don't know if that's exactly what happened with this non-unionized member. But this, the, the point that it was a non-unionized member means that that is a possibility, right? That is a conjecture that I am going to make. Um, I'm not saying that it's fact. I'm saying that is that is a, a, a reasonable hypothesis, <laughs> um, you know, that... Uh, why would a non-unionized member do this? Why would you not use a union member to do it? Because the union member follows certain codes. The union member is not going to turn on another union member, right? Like that's uh, despite the fact that the union is going to fight for everybody. Now, the Newspaper Guild of Pittsburgh president and PG reporter Mike Fuko tweeted last night indicating there is some link with uh, reporters' support for Johnson and why the stories were pulled from the PG website. Both Lee and Murray participated in the Twitter protests and tweeted the hashtag, I stand with Alexis. Uh, so the union is now saying, the union is saying that because of that tweet, that's why they, their stories were, were changed and manipulated because uh, they, don't, they don't want to be associated with this I stand with Alexis hashtag. Um, and, and fall under, you know, this thing of like, oh, we censored a journalist because uh, because she pointed out, like, you know, a, a predominantly white fan base caused more destruction and no one said anything about it. Um, PG photographer Michael Santiago noted on Twitter that sto the stories pulled also meant that staff photographers would not have their images shown on the paper's website. So there you go. That's another thing, right, is, is the, the photos being changed affects the staff photographers as well. Today, Santiago, who is black, tweeted that he was barred from covering protest-related stories. He condemned PG management for choosing to silence two of its most prominent black journalists during one of the most important civil rights stories that is happening across the country. An email obtained between CP, uh, City Paper, between uh, guild members and uh, uh, likely confirmed Santiago's removal for protest coverage. In fact, the Post-Gazette might be pulling all photographers off of protest coverage entirely. Right. So, you know, it's like, why would you send out photographers and videographers that can document the truth, that can document what's going on? You know, we, uh, I've, I've talked to journalists on my podcast, uh, Taboo Table Talk, where they basically talk about how police are, are, are on, like, without being provoked, shooting journalists with rubber bullets and tear gassing them. Uh, which by the way, that's those are also like chemical weapons and are banned by the Geneva Convention. Uh, so essentially this is an act of war on the free press in America, uh, independent free press in America and its own citizens by the police who work for the, who, who essentially only protect rich people and rich people's interests. They're not serving your community. Um, so, you know, it's just like, that's, that's what's happening. So it's just like, oh, they can sit there and claim like, well, we don't want, you know, like, what if they shoot at you? Yeah. What if they shoot at you? Should the cops be shooting at journalists? That should not be a fucking thing. Maybe that should be the fucking story that you talk about. So he said, uh, so this is, uh, this is um, Santiago here, the photographer. He said that we are no longer scheduling or shooting protests, reads the email sent yesterday from a union photography staffer referencing the conversation they had with management level PG editor. As I said, by we, you mean photo editors. And he said, yes, the photo department as a whole is no longer shooting protest photos so they're not you know so i mean this is this is like blatant censorship happening right in front of our eyes from like a center left 
I guess, a more neoliberal newspaper. Uh, the company has not talked to the Guild at all, and they have not talked to the reporters involved. Uh, we don't really know what's going on. Foucault believes that all of these decisions are clearly in retaliation for the support of Alexis. He says the entire situation can be resolved easily if management just takes the, away the ban on Johnson covering protests. This doesn't have to be like this, he says. Furthermore, PG copy editor and page designer Alyssa Brown says that the protest stories would also not be printed in the print week weekend edition and on newsstands uh, on the morning of June 6th. She called this move censorship. So basically, who reads the newspaper? Like physical print copies of the newspaper. I don't. I don't think I've read a newspaper since I was like 16 years old. Fucking 15 years ago. It's been over a decade since I picked up a newspaper and sat down and read it. I read articles off of the internet. I read digital content. That's what most people our age do, right? Most millennials, and but older folks don't. And there's probably some older folks, some good boy Democrats, some good girl Democrats, some neoliberals that only fucking pick up the print paper edition. And they only watch what CNN says about these protests, who are calling them riots, only what MSNBC says about these protests. And now, their paper doesn't even have these stories printed in them. And they're going to sit there and go, well, what the fuck, you know? And they're all only going to get these narratives. They're not going to get a new perspective. They're not going to understand what's exactly going on. They're not going to understand what this movement is about. They're going to hear buzzwords. They're going to think Black Lives Matter is some sort of militant black nationalist, you know, anarcho-terror group because that's how they are portrayed in the in, in corporate media. And they're going to think that all protesters are rioters. And they're going to think that all oh, good cops are around. And they're not going to understand what defund the police actually means. They're not going to understand how community initiatives can be put into place so that guys with guns don't have to be called for a mental health issue. That's, that's the reality of what's going on with this stuff. So uh, we're going to shift over to the response that came out a couple days ago. Let's see. I'm going to, sorry, it's taking me a minute to um, pull up the screen here. So this is the response here. This is the response from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Keith C. Burris, Truth, Fairness, and the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Uh, Keith Burris, who I think at the bottom, at the very end of this article, he's the executive editor of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette and the vice president and editorial ed editor, director of Block Newspapers. Okay, that's who this guy is. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so this is June 10th, is when he put this up. So just uh, two days ago, uh, the the other article is from June 8th, I believe. So that's from uh, Monday? Was that June 8th? Monday or Tuesday, I believe. Or no, June 6th, I'm sorry. So that was last Saturday. That article is about a week old. Uh, so that chronicles basically everything that happened in terms of the union. And then, you know, it's just like th this guy is making this editorial, but he's not, I mean, or this opinion piece or whatever, an op-ed, right? But he didn't talk to other newspapers that are trying to cover the story. So it's a little suspect already because this is going to, this itself is going to have some bias. Uh, so, okay. So let's read in the recent days. This is from Keith, Keith C. Burris. A, in the recent days, the readers of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette have been subjected to a great deal of disinformation about the Post-Gazette. It's time for the rest of the story. Let's start with this. Editors at the newspaper did not single out a black reporter and a black photographer and banned them from covering Pittsburgh protests after the killing of George Floyd. When that's literally what they said to the photographer. To Santiago, they were like, yeah, we're just not going to cover protests anymore. As a photo department, we're not going to cover the protests. Um, and they literally told that to Alexis Johnson, too. They were like, no, we're going to take you off of covering, uh, covering protests. Uh, as we certainly did not single out two people, 
and keep them from covering local protests because they were black. This is an outrageous lie and a defamation, in fact. What? Like, that's literally what the emails said. They didn't, the, the only thing they didn't say is because they were black. No, but people have eyes and they're like, oh, a black photographer, a black journalist, no longer allowed to cover protests. <laughs> We have eyes. Is Keith C. Burris not aware of our eyes? We assume the lie was so outrageous that it did not need re refutation. Refutation? I think that's how you say it. Maybe, it, maybe it's not. But uh, we assume that most people could read the paper and see for themselves that uh, see for themselves that the charge is an outrageous fabrication. We still think that ultimately this is true and the readers can think for themselves, then why not let these people cover protests? Why not let the photographer go out there and take photographs of the police tear gassing protesters, shooting rubber bullets at journalists, like we've seen from citizen journalists, from independent media, that, isn't, that doesn't have corporate control, that isn't listening to police unions, but we underestimated the power of social media and the corrosive potency of the racist label. It only needs to, it only, it need only be said and it is assumed by some people to be true. It's a weighing allegation because we have eyes and we can see that a black photographer and a black journalist were barred from covering protests. There are emails to prove it, bro. Here's the truth, oh, here it comes. No one was taken off the protest story because of race. One person was not assigned to a story because of the, uh, of the suggestion of bias. A tweet was issued and a dialogue followed that editors felt strongly was commentary, opinion, on a story the reporter was not supposed to report. This person was not taken off the story but was never on it. And this person does not cover race or protest. There is no such beat. This person covers social media normally. And where do you think a lot of these, like, did you not just say that you didn't realize the power of social media and you have a social media reporter that did something on social media and then you said no more protest report? Like, you can't say anything about protests anymore? Like, all of this is, and then, and then was the photographer a social media photographer? Was Laura Lee and Ashley Murray social media reporters? Like, this makes no fucking sense, what you just said, bro. The person was taken off the story because they made commentary slash opinion on the fact that people did not react to these Kenny Chesney concerts the same way that they are re reacting to the, the Black Lives Matter activists and the protests against police brutality that are going on the streets. You're telling me that when the Kenny Chesney event happened and fucking downtown exploded, the media didn't call them looters. That's a fact, dog. Like, they didn't call them looters. They were just like, oh, boy, look at all the fun they were having, huh? Look at that. Look at all the fun. Just uh, drinking their beers and singing their songs about patriotism and how America's great and bald legal sucking on their dicks. That's great. These guys, fun loving, fun loving fellas, these candy chess knights. That's a fact. That's not, she just made a correlation. She, she put shit together and she presented it and pointed it out in a tweet. And you're just like, well, can't have you fucking saying shit anymore. And now you're like, well, it's it's opinion. It's all that is. That's opinion. No, it's pretty much a glaring fact that like no one compared Jenny Sesney concerts to looting when it caused so much day. And it and on a yearly basis. It's like a yearly event. <sighs> when other journalists repeated the tweet, hence uh hence also opinioning they also disqualified from reporting on the protests. Almost all of them, over 80, were white. So why don't you have more black journalists covering protests? We did what we did for purely journalistic reasons. And here's the thing. 
every single person involved in this matter and every single person leading the propaganda campa campaign against this newspaper, most of whom work for this paper, knows, absolutely knows this full well. No, they don't. Not when your journalistic reason is you're not going to cover protests because you have an opinion. Yeah, journalists have opinions. They're allowed to have opinions. They're also reporting the truth. They're also reporting protests the way that they are, and you're editorializing them. You're changing up the story, and they have proof that somebody went in and changed the story. A non-union member went in and changed the fucking story. What's the journalistic reason for changing a story? What our editors did do was remind colleagues of a longstanding canon, canon of journalism ethics. When you announce an opinion about a person or story, you are reporting on you. You're reporting on you compromise your reporting. What? That sentence was very confusing. Let's try to read that again. When you announce an opinion about a person or story, you are reporting on you compromise your reporting. I think there's probably supposed to be a comma there somewhere. I'm not great with grammar, but that's part like that's like your job. Uh, because it's a very confusing sentence. I think I know what he's saying. Uh, if you tweet an opinion about the thing that you're reporting on, you compromise your reporting because you have an opinion about the thing. Um, so it, it, it can team it with the particular sense of bias. But I don't, once again, I think making a connection and, and a compare and contrast and putting things side to side, that's part of, that's also reporting. <laughs> like, hey, remember how the Kenny Chesney concerts were treated? And remember how they had a bunch of looting and riots and they fucking shit all over our streets and that was done by a bunch of white people? And now all of a sudden there is uh, people in support of black people not dying in the streets by the hands of violent police officers. And now you're calling them looters and, and militant and rioters. But you didn't do that for the white people. That seems like a racial bias. That's reporting. I just reported that to you. This is a long held tradition at this newspaper and at every good newspaper. You can disagree with that ethic or dismiss it at, as passe, but you cannot fairly call it racism. If the targets are black and you're also blocking a major civil rights story that involves specifically police violence towards minority communities, especially communities of black people, <laughs> You're walking on a dicey line, bruh. Post-Gazette guilt leaders have the right, indeed, the duty to seek the best for their members, but characterizing an editorial decision as racially motivated helps no person or no cause. So here's the other thing, right? Like, this has now become, in, in Keith's eyes, um, about race when it's really about censorship of a civil rights movement. You're, you, as a paper, are now editorializing journalistic reporting from on-the-ground reporters and then telling those on-the-ground reporters that they can't go on the ground anymore. And you're like, well, we're not racist for it. Okay. But you're still censoring your own fucking journalists and not showing a civil rights movement. Like... There, there is a bigger issue tied into the race issue, as there usually is. Did we fail to fully appreciate what, what the new civil rights movement means to a young black woman? Probably. Did we miss the larger context of what's happening in our country right now? Probably fucking Lee. As we attempted a teaching moment with a young reporter, did we miss what could have been our own teaching moment? Oh, okay, this is a weird fucking way to, to, to phrase that. Oh man, that's a weird way to fucking phrase that, phrase that. As we attempted a teaching moment with a young reporter, did we miss what could have been our own teaching moment? 
you told reporters to come to heel. That's kind of what you did. And now you're like, oh, man, did, did we miss our own teaching moment? Oh, silly us. Yeah, bro. Dude, apology. Like, you could just come out and this statement could have been like, hey, you know, we interpreted this as a teaching moment. I, I think we failed and I apologize for what we did to this young reporter. And this is a time that we can step back and learn. But all of this is this defensive, crazy bullshit of like, we're not racist. We're not, we're, we have journalistic ethics because we're not racist. Like, that's really what this thing comes off as. A reasonable person could make any of those cases. But no fair person could make the, <laughs> make the case that our actions were race-based. Oh, man, this guy's really holding on to the fact that he's not racist. We get it, bruh. You're not racist. You said hello to a black person once. That's cool. You, you, you've even shook hands with this young black reporter. Good on you, bud. Great job. Just, can somebody fucking give this guy a medal so he can learn how to actually write a fucking apology? This fucking Joe Biden wannabe over here. And we, oh, here it is. And we will not apologize for upholding professional standards in journalism or <laughs> attempting to eliminate bias. Christ. So basically, if you're a black person, you can't uh, you can't report on the Black Lives Matter movement because there's too too much uh, too much bias as a black person. So as a brown person, I can't talk about Im immigration because I might have some bias about immigration. Like this is the this is this is a really dumb fucking way to make this argument. Why is this important? Because fairness, removal of bias, removal of even the hint of conflict of interest is our gold standard. Uh, and all we really have is journalists. Oh my god. We must also acknowledge the larger and deeper truth of institutionalized racism. Yes, the vast number of reporters who stood with Alexis are white. We need to acknowledge that real reality and alter it over time. Um, I would also say that there's a lot of non-journalists that stood by with Alexis, and I would also wager to say that a lot of them are black and brown and gay and trans and all the other identities. So... What about the black reporters that stood with Alexis? Are you just dismissing them? Are you like, because, so Alexis's thing doesn't matter. Her, her censorship of you doesn't matter because, because a bunch of white people stood up. Yeah, white people need to stand up with black people. They need to, they need to realize what institutionalized racism is. And that's kind of what the fuck they did. <laughs> they were like, this is institutionalized racism. You fucking said a black woman can't cover Black Lives Matter protests. <laughs> that's fucked up. Did I skip a, a paragraph? I did. Yeah. We must also acknowledge the larger and deeper truth of race. It's a vast number. Okay. We need to acknowledge it. Okay. I didn't skip that part. Okay. Sorry. I lost my place. We believe, we believe we too stand with Alexis Johnson. We value her and her life experiences as we value all colleagues, but you won't let her write about it. How do you value her life and her experiences when you won't allow her to share said life and experiences through her through her form of journalism. So you don't value it. Instead, you have to tout that you were this older white guy that knows more about journalism than she does. We have and will continue to give her important assignments, but we must do so with the context of solid journalistic values. If we abandon those, we are lost. If we are driven by half-truths and mobs of social media, we are no longer journalists. When you fucking lie, when you editorialize journalism, when you take journalists' fucking written work and change them at the last minute before they're republished the following day, and, and the public catches you doing it and chastises you for it, then you don't fucking have journalistic integrity. You don't have 
you know, what what do you call it? Journalistic values. <laughs> like you just don't, bro. Like this guy is just ridiculous. Two things. Uh, two things are the bedrock of journalism: truth and fairness. Which neither of which you are exhibiting in this fucking op-ed piece. Uh, when we sacrifice those two things because we think our ends are just and those ends justify the means, we destroy our profession. At the same time, when journalism is under siege, we destroy ourselves. Uh, this is this is people holding you up to that journalistic value that you talked about. And because people are holding you up to it, you're like, oh, this is under siege now. The Block family, because this guy has another thing called the Block, I guess, uh, has a long and distinguished history on civil rights and no paper in America, whether considered over the past 100, 100 years or 100 days or 100 hours, has devoted more time, words, or space to the question of discrimination, race, prejudice, or justice than the Post-Gazette. That's because justice and fair play are indivisible. Balanced reporting and the decent treatment of fellow human beings go hand in hand. You never have you you never get to social justice without basic fairness. A cursory examination of our news pages and editorial pages of en on any given day of the week shows who we are, and no one knows our editors or any of their works or lives could believe any of them bigots. To the contrary, and then some. Okay, then why are you not letting these journalists cover protests? Why are you telling your your photographers that you're no longer going to send them to take photos of protests during one of the largest civil rights movements of the last decade, dog? If you're covering all of this important shit. Is this a time when people with power need to listen and be humble? Yes, but I'm going to tell you to shut the fuck up and listen to me because I'm Keith C. Burris, motherfucker, managing executive editor of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and vice president and editorial director of Block Newspapers. I will fuck you up with my editorials. Yes, indeed. Can that listening be compatible with good journalism? Absolutely. Shut the fuck up and do what I tell you to, journalists. <laughs> journalism, <laughs> journalism that made the most difference to, to civil rights movement in the 1960s came not from the advocates, but from the chroniclers, the reporters who let their subjects tell the stories and let the stories exert its own grace. But you're not letting them do that because you changed the stories of reporters that are doing exactly that. A journalist can be a commentator or a chronicler. He or she cannot be both at the same time. That's false. Uh, dude, listen to Glenn, Glenn Greenwald talk. That guy has opinions and he has facts. And he can sort out what's what. You can easily put something in there to be like, it's this reporter's opinion, blah, blah, blah. I've seen so many fucking journalists do that kind of shit. But whether he is he, just he, um, we went from he or she to he, but whether he is a straight up reporter or an opinion writer, he must, above all, seek to be fair and truthful. When journalists forget that every story has a larger and deeper scope, the, the result is simplistic and useless. When they sacrifice truth and fairness, the result is a, tra is, is a tragic fraud. You forgot that there is a larger and deeper scope to what's happening right now and what you did by telling journalists they can't cover it anymore. The owners and managers of this paper value every member of our team and community. We will also continue to insist upon the highest ethical and professional standards for every member of our family, and we will continue to listen and be chroniclers of larger moments and the deeper truths. I'm, I'm a little concerned to see what these comments are. <laughs> this guy's open letter is appalling and piece of rubbish and will send me into ending my subscription shame because I used to deliver papers for the Post-Gazette when I was a kid. Uh, this is very long. 
boy. Yeah, there's a lot of comments, guys. There's a lot of comments. I'm not going to read all of them. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them. So there it is, right? This is this is what's going on in in journalism today in Pittsburgh. Is they be, and so now the uh, Giant Eagle, which is this large grocery monopoly, uh, used to carry the Post Gazette and is no longer going to do that. They're no longer going to do that. So, uh, you know, there are consequences. There's probably going to be a bunch of people that unsubscribe from it. I don't. I'm not sure what the status of. Uh, um, I believe the gentleman's name is Michael Santiago, Alexis Johnson, Ashley Murray, Lauren Lee, and uh, I want to say Michael Santiago, who's the photographer. Yeah, Michael Santiago. Uh, I'm not sure what the status of that is. That that update has not come out. I am hoping that I get to talk to some of these folks. I have reached out to them um, on my end because I think this is an important story to, to address and to cover. And it's happening right in my fucking city with the, with a rather prominent newspaper, um, in the city. So I think, uh, you know, I, uh, that's part of the reason why I wanted to, to address it and talk about it and make sure we know what the fuck is going on. Uh, because, you know, this sort of stuff goes, uh, if you, if you were wondering why it's like protesters are, are looked down upon, there you go. <laughs> Here's, I mean, this is a blatant reason why they are, you know? All right, let's look at some comments. Mark Viola, Mark Viola was tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, Marky Mark. A uh, very funny comedian. Go check out his, his channel and his page there. Uh, nobody's actually having fun at a Kenny Chesney concert. <laughs> They're all just there by force. <laughs> they all got rounded up by the Chesnite, the real Chesnite army. You know, they got fucking rounded up. Um, it's called getting rowdy. It's yeah. What they're doing at the, at the Kenny Chesney concert is getting rowdy. Yeah. I always thought that was like getting a little too frisky uh, in the bedroom. Maybe that's revealing more about myself than, uh, than people need to need to know. I don't know. Um, well, I don't think the story went through an editor who is supposed to catch misspellings and grammar problems. Oh, I pointed out, that was the comment too. I pointed out that there's probably an area that needed a comma. Uh, so uh, yeah, I doubt that that went through an editor either. Uh, you know, all these facts of yours would be a lot easier if you popped off that shirt. This is true, I, I think, yeah, but I don't want to distract people from uh, my glistening man pecs. You know, it's about the truth, Mark. It's about truth and fairness. And boy, it wouldn't be fair to the truth if I popped that shirt off. I'm so sorry uh, you guys had to watch me do that. That was real gross and weird uh, for me uh, as well. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so Pittsburgh Post-Gazette still censored stories about protests and police brutality. Um, weird fucking op-ed that came out, but keep an eye on this sort of stuff, guys. Uh, you know, I think what this era is starting to show is that we, the people, um, have to be the, the, the guys that hold everybody, you know, the, 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 the points of authority's feet to the fire. That's what this is showing us. So you have independent journalists and I wouldn't be surprised if Alexis Johnson and Michael Santiago, Lauren Lee, Ashley, Ashley Murray, all these, all these journalists, if they ended up going to either a different paper, like the, uh, city paper or the current or something else or started their own independent endeavor that is outside of uh, of corporate control and corrupt union control right like the police union oh we don't want to we don't want people to see stories of of, of our officers shooting co oh, you know innocent protesters hey here's some money stop fucking yeah, that's corruption keep an eye out for that sort of stuff you know, when these stories like this happen, and this is part of the reason why, like, I think it's so important to talk about people like Julian Assange, who are currently in prison for revealing the war crimes of the elites, the corporate and war crimes of the elites, and he's in prison for it. That's why it's so important to talk about this stuff. This is happening on a local level. What's happening to Assange is on an international level, right? So on, on various different levels, this sort of stuff happens. You know, we, we see stories of people getting fired and let go and censored on 
um, on infinite levels. Ed Schultz, uh, uh, rest in peace, Ed Schultz. Ed Schultz was a phenomenal reporter who wanted to cover Bernie Sanders in 2016, and MSNBC told him that he's not allowed. Barred him, would not let him do it. So he left. Uh, Dylan Radigan, same thing. Told the truth about some shit, left MSNBC. Chris Hedges, New York Times, was doing his job too well as a war correspondent, left the New York Times. On a, on a small scale level, on a local level, this is happening. And, I'm, and I have to wonder how many other places uh, this is happening too. So keep an eye out for it, folks. Keep an eye out for that fuckery. All right. Uh, that is your episode. Uh, sorry that took a little bit longer. Uh, just about an hour, which is which is good. That's probably where I should keep these live streams. <laughs> Sometimes I tend to go on and on. Uh, but uh, if you if you check it out, make sure make sure you share this first and foremost. Um, get it out to different avenues, friends, family, people you like, people you hate, enemies, whoever uh, you think would benefit from stories like this. Um, you can donate to, to, to help me out. Uh, currently, the biggest way that I'm currently making a living, because most of my income has been uh, completely shattered by the pandemic, as a lot of people's has, um, you know, is um, by donating, becoming sustaining members, purchasing tickets to those Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, uh, purchasing an album, all those, those are kind of the ways that I'm, I'm uh, going to be able to stay afloat, earn an income, because uh, we're going to go back to having to take care of bills and, and things of that sort. Uh, and, uh, and basically, if Wave 2 hits, they've said that they're not going to do anything here. So, uh, you know, I depend on, I depend on you guys. I don't have any big corporate sponsors. I don't have small business sponsors. Um, you know, check out the podcasts that I do, check out the shows that I do. Um, I really just depend on you guys watching these streams, sharing these streams and donating, uh, to the cause. So I appreciate when you guys do that. Uh, I appreciate you guys, uh, hanging out with me this afternoon. Tomorrow I'll go live again. I'll be going live again, probably in the afternoon. Uh, and, uh, I have some more stuff about censorship and, and a few other things I'm trying to organize. Um, I've got the show tonight and then I'll see how much energy I have <laughs> to do, to do more stuff. Um, I am, I am a one man machine at this point and you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I, I just can't afford to pay anybody, um, uh, unless those sustaining memberships go up, unless those, those donations go up. Uh, ticket sales go up and all that sort of stuff. I just, uh, it's, it's all, uh, it's, it's all the things fall, uh, are on my plate to do. So when I do, when I do them and they, and it turns out to come out a little bit slower, it's, uh, it's cause of that. Uh, so I'll be going live again tomorrow. Hopefully we'll, we'll have some cool stuff for you guys to talk about. I have some articles lined up to, to do some research and address, uh, more censorship stuff is coming up. Um, so yeah, uh, Hopefully we'll see you at the at the show tonight, at the virtual show, the the Zoom virtual live stand up comedy show, and uh, and tomorrow's live stream. But till then, see you on the road. Thanks for tuning in.